Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the last video in the restoration series of the Sony CRF320. This one has been quite a challenge, a challenge that I've really, really enjoyed. This project has allowed me to um, get the experience that I wanted with the set, one that I've wanted to do for some time, and also experiment with 3D printing capabilities. I had to print quite a few bits and pieces for this radio, and it's really great to have the capability of just doing it at home and not having to wait for a supplier. So. 3D printer is really coming in handy. And in this video, I'm going to finish off by showing you the result of my attempt at replacing those pop-up antennas. The two antennas, you just push them in, they clip down. In fact, I can show you. Push down, and they click down, click in place, and hold. And I've been waiting for the antennas to arrive, so in this video I'll show you how I put that together. Just to remind you, I'm going to make all the files, the 3D files, Fusion 360 files, as well as the respective print files, available in a Dropbox, or rather in a Google Drive uh, folder, the link, of which, uh, link to which I'm going to leave below. You can download them and use them to your heart's content. Please don't ask me for specific help with them, because depending on what kind of um, latch switches you get, the different, uh, the actual application might be different. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, stick around and enjoy the video. Well, folks, the antennas have arrived. The two antennas that I've bought from a uh, online supplier. If I remember, I'll try and remember, I'll put the link for these, for the supplier of this in the description below. This, uh, I thought, was actually from Europe, but it happens to have come from Hong Kong. They conned me. I wanted to buy European uh, stock so it wouldn't go through customs, but I got the notification that I had a parcel from Hong Kong, so I had to go through the whole rigmarole of customs clearance. And it's exactly the same as the other ones. In other words, you can unscrew this, and you're left with a one meter long, that's three point something feet, aerial, that works pretty well. And in fact, someone just mentioned uh, they had a problem with um, aerial for a globetrotter, not Mende globetrotter or Glo globe traveler, and he asked where he could get replacement antennas. Well, replacement antennas for these um, for the 70s radios are very difficult to find. So I think this may well serve if you do a bit of modification uh, as a replacement for a lot of those antennas. But anyway, this is where it is. This is the one that I was using till now. These two are the ones that have arrived, and I've got everything ready to fit them on here. Let me show you first the two uh, bases that I've created for these antennas. Now, I don't mean this to be a how-to tutorial, because it's very difficult to explain how to fit this, because it depends entirely on what type of um, latch switch you get. Now, the ones I got here, I had to find a way of fitting them in there. And the consideration you have to take into account is how far is it from the side and how far is it from the back so that uh, the antenna comes in straight down in this case okay and on the other side is completely different this one i had to cut all sorts of shapes and it had a standoff there to get the height right but as i said you have to really play with what you can get and all of them will be different so this is by no means a complete how-to even though I'm going to share all the 3D models for the different little bits and pieces that I've uh, used on this to 3D print. And if you want to download them, by all means, but you're going to have to take it forward on your own because I really can't help you there, I'm afraid. So this is on the side. The other side was completely different. If you recall, the only thing I had here was this. The antenna fits into here like that. And then this goes on to there, okay? On this side, I don't have the space down here, which uh, this one does, so I had to do something different. I had to create a, a shifted stand. In other words, I had to create something that would allow me to fit this on there, and I, I fit this one on there, this latch switch, just uh, made two holes on there and screwed them in, and I had to plan the sizing and the spacing very, very well, and I had to design this. Now what this does is it'll go into there like that and then the antenna will come in here. So it's literally shifted back from the, um, from the axis of that plunger, but it basically does exactly the same thing. But let me show you how I put these together. 
We'll start with the first one, and the first one is very simple. I'm just going to use one of, actually I'll use that one. That just fits into the one side here, into there, and it fits quite well. Goes right in. Then you have to take one of these tags. It's quite a big tag on purpose, and that goes in there. That's where the antenna is going to be connected. Then I take this thing, which came with the um, with the latch switch. Put that in there. And then there's the screw that I found that fits this fits in here perfectly. There it is. And we can now solder the antenna wire to there, but I'll do that in a minute. That's the one side, the left side, okay, looking at it from the back. Very simple. This one is fairly similar. We've got the same situation down here where the, the antenna goes into that. I'll put in the tag as well. And then let's see if this thing fits in there. Uh, you see, these two washers came with the latch switch, and that's what I designed these holes for, but this one needs two. It needs one here, and it needs one over here, which is where I'm putting this one, and that's where the, um, the, the plunger of that latch switch is going to touch, and I'm counting on, that, on the magnetism of that, although not only on the magnetic properties of that. Let me just put this in here. I've got a screw here that'll fit that in there. That's it. That's nice and flat. Flush. Good. And now I'm going to put this through there. And I've got a screw here that is the right thread for the antenna. And I now push the antenna through. There we go, that one's ready as well. Let me show you how they fit in there. Now to fit these guys in here, you have to remove the top cap off and you really do have to loosen this up because otherwise it may not, it won't go in properly. Remember, this thing is done to be almost flush so this doesn't wobble around too much. So you loosen the top there and it fits in like this. It's actually just latched on there with the uh, with the magnets, but that's obviously not the way it's going to be. And let's look at the other one. This one is fairly similar, same story. You loosen the top, fits through there, and there we go. It's now in place, and it's just being held magnetically. Now what I've done here is I've extended the antenna wire from the top here, and I'll be able to solder this here. Now remember, this has got to move, right? This is going to move. This is going to go down and up. So you've got to leave this with a little bit of length so that it doesn't stretch and pull tight on there. Also, you've got to consider that if for some reason this comes loose and this antenna comes out, this is going to come all the way to here. So this is fine. That's a proper length for this. And I'll be able to just solder that on there. Put a bit of heat shrink as well just to keep it neat. So that'll be soldered on there and it'll be done pretty quickly so that I don't melt the plastic. PLA does melt rather easily. Here we are. This is done. Okay. And the other one looks like this. Okay. Now let's look at the top. So now we can screw this down. That's done. And I need to push that down in order to get that lid on. Just make sure we can reach this. And the same with the other side. Okay, now we can put the sides on because we need to put the, the knob at the end of all that. 
So here's the first one ready to receive the knob. And here's the right hand side as well. So we just need to screw the knob on there. Now for the moment of truth. Ta da! That's one. And that's two. So what's left to do? Well, now I have to glue that on there because if I pull this out up here, it'll pop out. If I pull it too much, it'll pop out. So I need to glue that. And I'm still wondering whether I should use um, epoxy or just, I'm going to think about it. Probably going to be sufficient to just use contact adhesive, the very strong one. Yeah, it'll probably do. It doesn't pull that much, but well, actually it does. It pulls quite a bit. When I pull it up, it does pull quite a bit. So pushing down isn't an issue, but pulling up is. There we go. Okay, nearly there. And here she is, finally. Finally, complete. I've so been looking forward to this day my first Sony CRF320. Got a feeling it's not going to be the last. And uh, this one had some really serious challenges, as you probably know if you follow the series. But the one that I want to show you first are the pop-up antennas. Here we go. That's one. And here's the FM one. This is so cool. This is so cool. I am so chuffed. I'm so chuffed with this. Such a small thing and it's made my day. So what did I do? Well, I first glued those down with contact adhesive, but they didn't actually inspire too much confidence. I was worried that when you pull that up, it'll actually come off. So I decided to clean off the adhesive and um, use JB Weld, which is what I've used now. It's got JB Weld on there. It's been about 12 hours since I stuck them in there, so I don't want to pull them all the way up because it probably needs a bit more time to cure. By tomorrow, it should be solid as a rock. And the antennas are done, as is the rest of it. Everything is complete. Everything's cleaned up. I have cleaned up the back. The back wasn't in bad shape at all. The uh, I'm going to actually send this plug or this socket with the radio because my friend doesn't have one of these. This thing fits perfectly on there. I don't know how easy it is to find them. I've got a few of these. Everything cleaned up inside and our radio is working. It's working beautifully. Now, one thing I've noticed about this is the reception on FM, the sensitivity on FM is astounding. I'm getting stations here perfectly that um, on the other radios, I can hear them, but uh, can't really listen to them. The AGC works very, very well. Um, there is one thing, this <laughs> sounds like Steve Jobs. I couldn't do a cover for that. I tried to uh, model it in uh, 3D. It uh, just was a little bit beyond me, so I can't do that. But this thing has been quite an experience with 3D printing, and a lot of experimentation was required. I mean, look at this. This is just the brackets to hold the antennas. This is all garbage. I just keep doing prototypes and trying them and then measuring them and reducing the size and the angle and everything else and I finally got it right. All that um, wasted PLA was worth it. There is one more thing. The other day I was playing with this and it failed on me again. So I've been waiting for those chips to arrive from um, a place called Aquario Electronica in, Liz in Porto and it just hasn't arrived. They had a problem with shipping. One of the items I had on there It wasn't even the chips that I wanted. But um, I'll be going to I'll be going to the north of Portugal uh, next month. So if it hasn't arrived by then, I'll pop into the shop there, give them a bollocksing, and uh, pick them up myself. So I'm going to hold on to this until the chips arrive. I want to replace those chips that I've um, already prepared for with the IC sockets. So it'll be very easy. Just remove the thing and uh, put the new ones in. That should solve the problem once and for all. I've shown you the demonstration of this thing picking up before, so I'm not going to do it again. This series has gone on for a long time. So once again, I want to thank uh, Mr. Carlson's lab and the radio shop for the excellent video series that uh, they produced and which made uh, restoring this possible. I must admit that when I took this on, it was 
a tall order, but I was looking forward to the challenge and I really have enjoyed it. It's resulted in me coming up with quite a few ideas about, um, you know, the replacing replacement bulbs and all that sort of thing, and really seeing the power of being able to 3D print parts when a radio like this comes up and there are parts missing or broken or need to be modified. It really is amazing. So I really hope you've enjoyed this series. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. Links are in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.